Hello everyone and welcome back to Love English. I'm Sabra and today we're looking at the do's and the don'ts of British etiquette. So if you're coming here for work or for study or even for a holiday, this is really a guide on how to behave in the UK so as not to cause offence or embarrassment. As you probably know, the Brits are known for being a polite nation. We're not perhaps as polite as the Japanese or our kind of rules are not quite as complex as the Japanese, but we do have certain codes of conduct and behaviours that should be followed in order to avoid causing offence or embarrassment. This video can't really instruct you on how to behave at the very top of society, so the upper echelons as it were, because the behaviour required there is far more rigorous. However, it is a general guide on what to do and what not to do on a trip to the UK. We'll also be looking at useful vocabulary and phrases as we go. Right, let's get started with the rules for greetings. Now this can be a bit of a grey area in the UK, as people do different things according to the region or even their age. I would say that generally one of the most done things is a handshake. However, let's look at some do's and don'ts. Don't kiss somebody on the cheek that you do not know very well. This could be considered overly formal. Do watch what other people do and copy that. Definitely don't do the two kisses, so one on each cheek, because that comes across as quite forward in the UK, unless you know the person very well and that's what you normally do. But with somebody you don't know very well, they could be a little bit shocked if you kiss them twice. Do offer a handshake in most situations, that's the basic greeting in the UK. And do hug your close friends. In the UK, normally, we actually hug a lot as well. We tend not to do as much kissing, we do more hugging. And definitely with your close friends or people you know quite well, we usually do offer a hug. But even for British people, this can be confusing because sometimes we don't know whether it's handshake, whether it's hug, or even sometimes a kiss. And there can be this awkward moment where British people kind of go, oh, what do I do? <laughs> but the best thing is to watch what other people do and try and follow that. Useful phrases here are, of course, it's nice to meet you, it's great to meet you, more formal would be, it's a pleasure to meet you. If you're meeting somebody that you know already, you can say, how are you doing, how's life treating you, anything like that. What do you do in your country when it comes to greetings? Drop us a comment below and tell us about that. The next area we're going to look at is eating out and socialising. So if you're eating with a group of people, do wait for everyone to be seated before you start eating otherwise it can be very impolite. Don't put your elbows on the table, that is considered bad manners. Uh, my mother was always telling me, don't put your elbows on the table. So that's something we don't do in the UK. Don't make loud noises as you're eating, again that's considered impolite and a little strange. I know in some countries making sort of slurping noises or even a belch can um, show appreciation of the meal, but in the UK we tend not to do that. In fact, we find um, slurping sounds and things like that really quite off-putting when it comes to eating. I cannot abide those loud slurping sounds she makes when she drinks her tea. Oh, it vexes me greatly. Don't get up from the table until everyone is finished. It's quite rude to leave the table before everybody is finished. Do use a napkin. We usually use a napkin, but we don't really put it here. That can be overly formal. We tend to put a napkin on our laps. But in most um, formal situations, we do have a napkin. Do say that a meal tastes nice if someone has prepared it for you, even if it doesn't. It would be extremely rude to say, oh, it's not so good, or it's not very tasty. We're not very direct in the UK, we're quite indirect, and it would be quite rude to say something like that if somebody has gone to the trouble of making a meal for you. So you don't need to be overly exuberant if it's not great, but you can say, hmm, it's tasty, yeah, very nice. So you should always still be complimentary. It's good. <laughs> really? How oh, good? It's so good that I feel really selfish about being the only one who's eating it. Useful phrases here are, this is delicious, this is scrumptious, this is yummy, or in a more formal situation you could say, this is delectable, or this food is excellent. Now for many cultures, the next one may seem quite strange. 
don't complain if there is a problem with the meal. If it's a small problem, don't complain. If there's a big problem, you can. But generally, we don't like making a scene in England. We don't like causing a scene, really. We get easily embarrassed. And also, we worry that if we complain in a restaurant that the chef could do something to our meal and it may come back worse. So we tend not to complain unless there's a big issue. So I know in America, if there's an issue with the meal, it'll be sent straight back and the emphasis is on quality. In the UK, we're just too polite um, to do that. So we tend to just accept it if something isn't quite perfect. Why don't you say something? Well, there's no point, is there? We just won't come here again. Then I'll say something. Look, it won't do any good. We're leaving tomorrow. Well, I... What do you do in your country? Tell me about that in the comments below. The next one is don't shout loudly at waiters or waitresses to get their attention across a restaurant. So you normally would just wait for them to pass, even if it takes some time, you wait for them to pass and then you would say, excuse me, or you try and catch their eye across a room or wave, but we don't start shouting at them across rooms. Also, we don't stretch our arms across the table to get something that is far from us. We don't stand up and reach for it either. We ask somebody who is nearer to it to pass it to us. A further note on this is that we don't say, can you pass me the salt, please? That's not enough. You need to say, please, could you pass me the salt? Or would you mind passing me the salt? The same with all favours in England. We always say, could you and would you? Unless we're with family or very close friends. Normally, we say, could you or would you? Uh, would you mind, possibly? Could you, if it wouldn't trouble you too much? Um, could you pass me the salt? When it comes to eating out, we do normally leave a tip, so do leave a tip, and normally that's 10%, as a customary tip is 10%. This tends to be in more formal restaurants though, in cafes we don't tend to leave as many tips, but for meals out, evenings out, we do usually leave a 10% tip. Do you leave tips in your country and what's the customary percentage? Okay, next we're looking at social behaviour and dating. Don't visit people unannounced. So if you haven't made an arrangement to visit somebody at their home, even if you're in the area, you can't really drop by unannounced. That would be considered bad manners and the person may not be expecting you. We like to be tidy and ready for guests in the UK. So we don't generally do that. If you are in the area, you could give them a call and say, hello, would you mind if I pop in or would you mind if I drop by for a cup of tea? Are you around? Um, but you don't just go and call. That would be considered a little bit rude and a little bit presumptuous. Now, the next one is about punctuality. Don't be more than 15 minutes late for a dinner party or for going over to a friend's house unless you have a good explanation. It can come across again as a little bit rude. The food may have been prepared. So if you're going to be later than that, you should let them know and explain why. So you should add some things like, I'm so sorry, I've got caught up at work or I've been stuck in traffic. You should give the reason but generally more than 15 minutes late is considered a little bit rude. Now I know that may be strange for um, Spanish, Italians, Latin Americans because often the time agreed is actually usually known to be much later than that so if you all make, agree to meet at 8 people will tend to turn up at um, 8.30. Not so in England we do tend to stick to the time. You're late and it was traffic. Yeah, it's traffic. <laughs> Wasn't it traffic? Yeah, give me it traffic. traffic. Tell me about what you do in your countries. Do you turn up on time, early, or is it okay to be a bit late? The next one is do make small talk. At the beginning of meeting up, we tend to not go into more personal matters or more heavy subjects straight away. We tend to warm up by chatting about general matters. So we make small talk. The next one may cause some controversy, but I'm going to say it. Do, if you are a man, do offer to pay if you take a lady out for a date. Do offer to pay. Even if she insists that she would like to pay half, it's generally customary, perhaps on the first, second, even the third date, that the man pays, or at least offers to pay. It can seem ungentlemanly not to. If the lady then says, no, no, I really would prefer to pay half, I much prefer um, to go 50-50 from the beginning, that's fine but do offer at least. Otherwise, it can come across as a little bit ungentlemanly, a little bit lacking in chivalry. 
you buy dinner, and then if we go on for a drink, I'll buy the first round, no problem at all. But you ask me on a date, you pick up the bill. It's romance. Yeah. Now, if it's friends meeting, if somebody has invited you, don't assume they will pay. This is between friends. Now, I know in a lot of countries, if a friend um, instigates the invitation, then they are expected to pay. I know Italians say the one who makes the arrangement often will then pay. However, in the UK, if it's friends meeting, even if one has invited the other out for the coffee, we still tend to split the bill. It's only in relationships or dating situations where one may offer to pay. In same-sex relationships with dating, I believe it would be the person who invited the other person that would offer to pay. Next one is do hold the door open for women, especially women with children. Um, generally, this is considered gentlemanly. Some women don't like this anymore and say, oh, no, don't worry, I can get it, which is fine, but it's always nice and polite behavior to offer to let them go first or to hold the door open. My partner always does that for me. He still holds the door open for me or lets me go first, and we've been going out for a long time, but he still thinks it's polite to do that, and I think it's rather sweet. Here, we often say phrases like, let me get that for you, or after you. The next don't is, don't make ostentatious and boastful comments in public. The British like people who are a little bit more humble, or at least kind of pretend to be humble in some ways. We don't like people who brag or who boast a lot about what they have or their achievements. We find that a little bit inappropriate, a little bit distasteful. So if you've got a fantastic new car, we don't tend to tell people, oh, I just bought the most amazing new car. <gasps> oh, it's an absolutely fantastic car. I've got the best car. Even if we do, we don't tend to say it like that. We would say, oh, I've just bought a new car. You know, I really, really like it. It's a really good model. But we don't tend to boast or brag. We find that quite distasteful. And leading on from this, we prefer to be self-deprecating in public. So even if someone compliments us, we won't say, oh, yes, you're right. I am a great chef. Or yes, I, I think I am doing well. We tend to um, put ourselves down a little bit to come across as humble and to not come across as boastful. We tend to say things like, yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah, I think I'm doing quite well. We don't boast. We tend to just put ourselves down a little bit or even put ourselves down in a humorous way um, to make others laugh. So imagine you do cook a great meal um, and everybody is complimenting you instead of saying, yeah, I did really well. It has, it has turned out really well. It might be better to say something like, oh, well, anyone can follow a recipe, or it was luck of the draw, something like that, rather than um, accepting the compliment so readily. It's a, it's a very difficult thing, this one, and for outsiders, it can seem a bit silly, but it is part of British culture not to be too boastful and to try to be self-deprecating so as not to make others feel intimidated, so as to make others feel relaxed. That's the main aim of it. Two little things I feel I should say as best man. This is only the, the second time I've, I've ever been a best man. I, I hope I did the job all right that time. A couple in question are at least still talking to me. Right, now a couple of general rules. Do queue in the UK. The British love queuing. We very much respect the queue and we hate queue jumpers. So if you do cut into a queue, do expect that somebody will say something to you and people will definitely give you um, funny looks and things like that. The next one is do say please, thank you, and sorry all the time. <laughs> Even for little things, we should say please and thank you. So for example, to the bus driver, we should say thank you. When we're asking somebody to do us a favor, like close the window, we should say thank you. And when it comes to sorry, even if you are not the one at fault, you should still say sorry. So for example, if somebody bumps into you in the street and they bumped into you, we generally still say sorry. Don't ask me why, it's just one of those um, finer details of British society that has carried on. So we would say, oh, sorry, even if it's not our fault, it just comes across as more polite. I'm terribly sorry. Terribly sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were a waiter. The next one is do respect other people's personal space. We tend to prefer it if people keep about an arm's length of distance and we feel a little bit uncomfortable if people come too close to us. We don't tend to hold hands with our friends or things like that. I know in um, some countries, Arabic cultures, you can hold hands with your friends. We don't tend to do that in UK culture and that could make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. Also, if you're getting on a bus and there is one person sitting on a seat, 
it's better if you go and sit on your own seat rather than going and sitting next to them. It would seem a little bit strange and forward if there were many other spare seats and you decided to sit next to them. In fact, when I was in South America, I found it really strange that people would come and sit next to me when there was many spaces on the bus. But I was then told that actually it's just normal and people like to chat to others and so they might sit next to somebody hoping to get into conversation. In the UK, we're not quite as sociable as that, unfortunately, and we prefer to stay in our own little worlds and um, sit and gaze out of the window. So we don't tend to sit so close to other people. The last one is public displays of affection, PDA for short. Now in the UK, some people are okay about this. They're okay with couples kissing very openly at dinner parties or in front of other people, um, in the streets, you know, having um, close embraces and snogs. That's for some people, that's okay. But I would say as a general rule, if you don't know the people that well, I wouldn't um, have very kind of um, amorous public displays of affection in front of them. I know in Italy, everybody seems to be kissing in the street, which is just lovely. But in the UK, you might see people having a kiss in the street, but perhaps not um, a sort of uh, a more intimate snog or anything like that. And again, not in front of people you don't know very well. We tend to keep it a little bit more reserved and a little bit more um, brief if we're in front of people who we don't know that well. Whoa, hey, what's going on here? Get a room, you two. <laughs> Do you know that in some cultures, the young people can kiss each other lustfully and grab each other in the street? Ugh, I find it most improper. What do you do in your country? In fact, for any of these, please do comment below and tell us what you do in your countries. We'll be absolutely fascinated to know. We could even use the comments as a way to educate each other about what is the correct done thing and the right ways to behave socially in each other's countries.